Hey, you're back here with old Barry again. Let me ask you something. If you all of a sudden knew that your home country and the very people that are keeping you under lockdown had something to do with this virus in the laboratory in Wuhan, China, that they, to a fair degree, actually funded this research, would that change the way you look at things? We're going to, uh, the mentors knew about this, but um, about 14 days ago, and we just kept it quiet till it got out a little bit because we didn't want to lose what little credibility we're building up. But now that the cat's beginning to come out of the bag, I wonder how many people, if it's not just 100% fear that's got them now addicted and under complete control, if they found out that it was their actually their own country that at least partially funded this research in that lab in Wuhan, China, and there's documented proof to show it. And uh, Fauci and everybody, ground floor. They, they, I mean, ground floor, they're making this, this, is, this whole thing. I'm not saying there isn't a virus. I'm saying the deadly part of it. This whole thing's been blowing so out of proportion just to keep you all in fear. So anyway, uh, just listen to the first one, and then uh, we'll cut in with the second one, okay? This, if this isn't going to get forwarded to everybody you know, I, I don't know. I mean, folks, think about it. You know, we, we got people that think they're free, and uh, they're saying, uh, you closed down your business because we told you to. Hmm. Uh, we're free, but nah, you don't go to work because we told you to. You don't feed your family because we told you to. You stick this garbage in your children because we told you to. All right, so uh, it's pretty powerful, okay? I know it's gut-wrenching, though, because when I first found out about it, I wasn't surprised because I study history so much, and I can go back to uh, just about every war, revolution, government coup, and, 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 and go through and get into some of the finer details, but that's not going to help us. That's my hobby. The... Information that my hobby yields is what will help us. And uh, like I say, we knew about this uh, just shy of two weeks ago. Have a listen. It's incredible. I want to turn for a moment from the economy into the virus itself. And I want to take just a slight victory lap because I remember on this very show, Senator, on March 10th, over a month ago, you suggested that there was very likely a link between the Wuhan Institute of Virology and this virus that just so coincidentally happened to occur within a couple miles of that institute. During that time, the mainstream media said this was crazy. This was a conspiracy theory. Yep. There was no evidence of it. Now we are getting multiple reports all saying that the virus came from the lab. Uh, my question here is not, <laughs> my point is not just to take a victory lap. My question is, did the U.S. government know that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was conducting this sort of dangerous research? And if we did know, why didn't we stop it? Absolutely, yes, the U.S. government knew. And, and in fact, when, when, when you and I brought this up on March 10th, over the, a month ago, you're right, it was treated as tin, tinfoil hat, conspiracy theory, nut jobbery. Well, it turns out there was, wasn't just one, there were two labs within miles of where this outbreak break occurred that were studying coronaviruses from bats and, and that there were internal State Department wires before this pandemic raising concerns about the security in those labs and that an accidental uh, a virus could escape and cause a global pandemic. But I'll tell you, it's worse than that. And, and, and let me give you some, some breaking news right now, which is the U.S. government was funding the Chinese research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Your taxpayer dollars and my taxpayer dollars. And let me give you specifics that we just got today. Today, an inquiring of the National Institutes of Health, did any of your money go to the Wuhan Institute of Virology? The answer is yes. And, and, and here's, what, here's what they told us in writing today. They said in fiscal year 2019, the funding for the Wuhan Institute for Virology was $76,000 and, and the $301, $76,301. Now, what did it go to? And I'm, I'm repeating what NIH has told me in writing it went to. It was part of an overall $3.7 million funding program that went to 
six years in sites in China, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Myanmar. And, and here's what they were studying. These are NIH's words. The project included studying viral diversity in animal, parentheses, bats, reservoirs, surveying people that live in high-risk communities for evidence of bat coronavirus infection, and conducting laboratory experiments to analyze and predict which newly discovered viruses pose the greatest threats to human health. That's what the NIH funding was going to. And we followed up and said, okay, that's what you described as the project in all of these countries. How about at the Wuhan Institute of Virology? What specifically did U.S. Yeah. taxpayer dollars go to at the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Here's what the NIH said in writing. Said, said the, the project supported the following activities at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Coronavirus screening and serology of non-human samples, viral pathogenesis, serological testing, host receptor binding, spike S protein sequencing, and in vitro and in viva virus characterization. And it goes on to say that, that, that they had not supported the creation of recombinant vi viruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. I, I just want to make That's sure. That's what your tax dollars and my tax dollars went to. I want to make sure that I have got this right, because obviously, if there were State Department memos about this, a lot of people knew about this from the very beginning of this pandemic. And what, what you're saying right now, according to the NIH, is for the past month and a half, two months, even, even more, We've been told the Wuhan Institute of Virology had nothing to do with this coronavirus. It's just a coincidence. Uh, get your tinfoil hat off. No way that that happened. Not only do we now hear serious reports that it came from the lab. Now we are learning, whoopsie daisy, I guess we forgot actually U.S. taxpayer money was being used to fund that very viral research at the laboratory. Well, and, and, and let me make clear, we don't have confirmed evidence that it did right. come from the lab. We still don't know that. Just reports. What we know is that U U.S. taxpayer dollars were going to the Chinese government to fund this research on bat coronaviruses, on, on how, they could, how, how they could be infectious to humans, how they could be transmitted to humans, how they could be dangerous to humans, at the same time that the State Department was raising real concerns wow. about the safety and security protocols at the lab that we're, we're, we're partially funding. And, 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 and that, uh, you, I gotta say, that is nuts. And, and given that they were studying these bat coronaviruses, the Chinese government needs to answer the question right now. Were they studying the novel coronavirus, this virus, yeah. the virus that has killed over 140,000 people worldwide, was that a virus that was studied at one or both of the Chinese government labs in Wuhan. They won't answer that question. They need to answer that question. And over 100,000 lives have been lost while they refuse to answer that question. You know, thank you for watching. Wow. Um, so like I say, um, hmm. is there any difference of a reaction if that were true? I know I would be absolutely devastated. I know I would feel that I was played the fool, and I, I swallowed that bait, hook, line, and sinker. The bait I'm talking about is fear. Now, I also don't want to come across like I'm cold because uh, I, I don't appear to be that way. I help a lot of people, but I want to tell you something. The numbers that cruise throughout. When you run that around 7.8 billion people on this planet is chicken crap in terms of percentages. Many, 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 many more die from the regular flu every year. Many more die from cigarette smoking. Many more die from heart attack. So this, this like I say, don't get carried away now. Any death is a tragedy, and I'm not saying it's not. But I'm just saying don't get carried away with that. Uh, the next thing what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, 
a little bit later now. This is off of um, another uh, website that I do follow from time to time, and it's um, Dr. Chris Martinson and Peak Prosperity. And um, while I may not agree with everything about the uh, urgency he makes on the virus, I do agree with a lot of other points he makes. And uh, I guess like ourselves, my family, he's pretty well, uh, you know, looked after things in terms of food and, and being, you know, self-sufficient to a degree. So um, I had the privilege of uh, talking with Chris on uh, one of uh, my interviews, I guess. I think it was about four or five years ago. Anyway, uh, Peak Prosperity, like anything, uh, has some, some good information to it. Uh, it's also a, a good blog website. I, I feel it's worth it for people that do want to stay in the loop. But like anything, uh, anybody's website, including mine, you're going to take away some good points about it. There are some points you're not going to like about it. And, again, that's what normality is. If you're 100% one way or 100% the other, remember, you're leaning a little bit more uh, towards a communistic attitude, right? Democracy is generally not 100% one way or another. Now, what's coming that way, socialism in America, yeah, that's that's 100%. We are entering, make no mistake about it, we're entering a decade of authoritarianism. Make no mistake about that. And if it isn't for the few people like us and Chris and these great sites and uh, London Real and Dave Ike and a host of others trying to bring honesty to you, where the masses would much rather take the easy way out and just live in fear and uh, pretend everything's going to be okay if they just keep their head down in the sand. It's sad, but like I say, I really believe part of that's wired in our DNA. Anyway, uh, we're going to go on to the second one now. This is already from, like I say, Dr. Chris Martinson, but he, and I respect it, it's one of the reasons why old Barry and DR held back, too. Um, I knew about this over two weeks ago. The mentors did. And, um, again, I didn't want to be one of the first, and I still am going to be, uh, to most of you watching this, uh, one of the first ones releasing this. Because it's such a strong piece of information. Is right off the cuff, it's like, oh, who's Barry and DR? How's he going to know that? And, of course, I'd be bucking every piece of credible information that you think you already had received and absorbed. So now that there's a little bit more credibility, I respect Chris's idea about waiting. Now that Newsweek has brought it out in their magazine, now maybe it's okay to release it. All right? So have a listen to a little bit. And uh, it's 40 minutes long, but I think it's, uh, while I don't agree a lot with his uh, view on the severity of the virus and many other aspects I do, and uh, just have a listen, okay? All right. I raised that because I want to uh, bring you to this bombshell report that came out in Newsweek. Uh, and so this came out a number of days ago. I've been digesting it. Um, and uh, so what's that? Three days ago. This is uh, really important information. I haven't really seen it picked up. Like I said, about 14 days ago, we knew about this. Up in a lot of other places, but this is really a bombshell, and it deserves our highest uh, attention. It really does. And I've been sitting on this information for a while. I've had the information that was in this article. They've got given me some new stuff as well. Very well-written articles, so uh, I'm not trying to say I, I scooped them. Uh, but I've been sitting on it because I didn't know what to do with this information. I didn't want to come off like a nutter or uh, didn't want anybody to think I was reaching too far. But now that it's in Newsweek, I think that helps. And so I can talk about this more openly. Dr. Fauci, remember who uh, Brad Pitt has uh, played and then took his wig and, and makeup off and, and thanked Dr. Fauci from the bottom of his heart for uh, uh, doing what he does. But this same Dr. Fauci backed controversial Wuhan lab with millions of dollars, U.S. dollars, for risky coronavirus research. Let's check in here. Dr. Anthony Fauci, Fauci is an advisor to President Donald Trump and something of an American folk hero for his steady, calm leadership during the pandemic crisis. At least one poll shows that Americans trust Fauci more than Trump on the coronavirus pandemic. And few scientists are portrayed on TV by Brad Pitt. But just last year, the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the organization led by Dr. Fauci, funded scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology 
and other institutions for work on gain-of-function research on bat corona viruses. I'm going to tell Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if this piece of information you don't forward to everyone you know, I, I don't know anymore. I've run out, and I'm probably wasting my time even trying to help uh, at this point. If this is not put down everybody's, in front of everybody's faces, if people are still afraid to speak their mind and bend the knee on a belief, but refuse to speak the truth, if we've diminished to that type of society, remember freedom in any nation is directly related to the level of frequency of the citizenry of that nation. So if, you, if you're losing your freedoms, it's because the frequency of the citizenry has diminished. It's become lower. Fear is about the lowest frequency I know of. And I've, I've studied this uh, for... <sighs> For decades, it's my it's my hobby. I'm not saying I'm anybody special, but bad example because I I do I used to do it all the time. But you build engines for decades. You build engines for decades. You know how to build an engine right. You know the shortcuts. You know what blueprinting is. You know what loose fit is. You know what tight is. And you just learn from hands on. That's all I'm saying. It's just a passion of Actually, all four of us. And uh, if people cannot take the time and forward this type of information that absolutely is a game changer, you own nothing. They told you close your business, you closed. They told you don't go to work, you didn't. They told you to stay at home and stay in your house, you obeyed. You don't understand they own your total communications, they own your resources, they own everything. You own nothing. And if you think you own a house because it's paid for, don't pay the taxes and you'll see who owns it quickly. You have been given a lease to use it. As long as you pay the true owner, it's usage fees. So he's charging you every year to use what you paid for to build or buy. Who really owns it? We own nothing because we stay in fear. If we could band together with the same tightness that we do with fear, only on the other spectrum, everything we ever dreamed of is just on the other side of that. Anyway, I'm going to continue just a bit more, and I'm going to have Leanne link it because I don't have the time to watch 48 minutes. But if you value anything left of what you have, I'm talking to you while you're sitting there under forced lockdown. I don't know what more information you would need. I don't know what else it would take to show you. What is happening, not convince, not trick, not illusion to show you what is while you sit under lockdown and you still cannot get out of your shell. Humanity's reached a new low. Anyway, um, a little bit more. Tell you what gain of function is in a second. Really important phrase there. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But first, we'll note here in 2019. With the backing of the NIAID, the National Institutes of Health committed $3.7 million over six years for research that included some gain-of-function work. The program followed another $3.7 million five-year project for collecting and studying bat coronaviruses, which ended in 2019, bringing the total to $7.4 million. So the first thing they did, they spent five years collecting and studying bat coronaviruses. And then 
starting in 2019, started monkeying around with gain of function work on those collected viruses. So they went out into nature, went into the caves, collected all these viruses, probably amplified them, studied them, did some stuff, but then they went in and in, uh, invest went into gain of function. So what is this gain of function? This also from the NIH talks about certain gain of function studies with the potential to enhance the pathogenicity or transmissibility or both of potential pandemic pathogens, PPPs, have raised biosafety and biosecurity concerns, including the potential dual use risks associated with the misuse of the information or products resulting from such research. So you remember that clip we just watched? Um, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to have Leanne link it, but um, I just wanted to, I'm in shock every time I even watch. I, I'm usually not not one lost for words. People, people who know me uh, know I can pretty much verbally checkmate anybody in three or four moves. But the simple thing is uh, I can combat this with a smart line, but I'm just, I'm so disgusted. I don't think it would even suit the video. It's Barry and DR. And... Um, We'll keep this stuff coming, but my goodness, if it's not going to get out to, we're only trying to distribute this. Uh, be sure everybody watches the uh, London Real show, Brian Rose, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, just remember, uh, listen to what time it is. Leanne's linked it in the previous video. And people, uh, if we're not going to get in the faces, I told you, and I'm going to leave it at this, and I mean nothing wrong personally against the people. When I'm, I told you in an earlier video, it's getting time to be careful of the people still wearing the mask. Okay, it's Barry NDR.